That's something like, you know what I mean? You see something happening. And it's like unbelievable it's happening. And then it really happens. You know what I'm talking about. Think about it. So look at this beautiful instrument behind us. This is like a unique sort of instrument. It's a beautiful label. It's a Zimgar Special Made number 39S. And it's got all the accoutrements. It's got the strap. It's got all the labels. It's made in Korea. Probably from like the 70s. It's incredible. I actually have the box too. The box is kind of in jacked up condition. And every time I open and get it out of the box, it becomes even more jacked up. So I'm going to try to, you know what I mean, make this episode short, put it back in the box, secure the box, and never look at it again. So this is a special moment to be shared together quickly. And it's not really Get Kids Gets. I know a lot of these episodes I'm doing lately are like kind of, hey, he's a lazy man. I still have, I've never, I've never strung this up. It looks like it has like a, has like a, like a cheese bird set up. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be set up. It's got a floating bridge. It's got to be cleaned up. I don't know, man. You know, I mean, a couple of things we can do together. Talk about it. But let's talk about Zimgar to waste a little time. Right? What's Zimgar? People see Zimgar a lot, especially with looking for parts. You know what I mean? eBay, Reverb, Zimgar, Matsua, you know what I mean? Tiesco. You know what I'm saying? There's all kinds of Zimgar always on there, man. What is Zimgar? Who's Zimgar? Zimgar is the brand name of a company called Gar Zim huh? in Brooklyn. Now, I believe it originally started in the late 50s as American Musical Supply. And then he found out there's another company called American Musical Supply. And at this time, I think he had a salesman by the name of Garfield. So he's like, you know what I mean? I think Garfield like, put a little pressure on Larry Zimmerman. You know what I mean? And like, was it be God's them asshole? And then Garfield disappeared. And then he started running it with his wife. You know what I mean? And they, they lasted up until like mid 70s. And they kind of disappeared. Mostly import Tiesco electric guitars. That's what the collector market really likes. Because a lot of these acoustics float around. This is a little tiny student model. It's got a lot of like pick wear up here. I don't know if somebody was playing a lefty. It's a strung righty. Uh, or maybe just an amateur. That's the only thing. It has like a nice matte finish. So that kind of bothers me a little bit. It bothers me when I see a lot of pick wear. Like some kind of jackhole was playing my guitar. Hey, don't you fucking do that with the pick. I shoved that up to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't mistreat your instrument. If you don't know how to play an instrument, don't play it. That's on behalf of the old get kid. You know what I'm saying? Don't abuse it. Just, you know what I mean? Don't even use it. You can peruse it. You know what I mean? But don't abuse it. Because I don't want you to blues it. Or lose it. You know what I mean? And certainly, certainly don't choose it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to flip you around. We're going to take a look at this beautiful label. It's so gorgeous. Got all kinds of cobwebs in there. we got to take all these strings. We might as well just give it a new set of strings, maybe. All the stickers are intact. I'll show you the decrepit box. We have so many wonderful things. Early 70s. You know what I'm saying? It's like a time capsule. It's a time capsule back into the times when Tricky Dick was tricking out his dick. Tricking out his dick. Tricking out his dick. You can't hear what I'm saying because I'm clapping. What did I say? I don't know. I'm going to flip you around. We'll talk about the Zimgar. We're not going to talk about Tricky Dick anymore. Huh? Peace be with you. Always. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. That's the original box, people. Zimgar 39S. In case you're confused about the model number, man. Look, that's the original owner, man. Steve, man. man. You gonna elude Steve? Hey, man. You trying to guess his last name? It's not fair, man. He's not here to defend himself. Well, I'll let you know, though. 50 years ago, he lived in Burlingtown. He was very fragile, and he had no hooks, man. His box is in pretty good condition after 50 years, though, man. Look. It was protected from the gerbil that's trying to piss on the guitar, man. Hey, man. Man, man, look at that. That's righteous, man. Very, very righteous. Let's kind of lose the box so I can show it to you a little bit more freely. Right? And there it is in all its matte glory. Nothing says early to mid 70s like pleather, man. 100% pleather. Although it's actually got a little leather on the front here. So 96.3% pleather. It's nice brass, heavy. Yeah, nice, man. Beautiful. Happening. 
You know what I'm saying? It's real refined. You know what I'm saying? It's a little dirty, but everything's there. You know what I'm saying? It was like, it was like King Tut's tomb. It's definitely made in Coal Rica. Oh, all the stickers are there. It's nice. Just a little bit of wiping off to be done, really. Looks like these are actual real inlay, too. Love the stickers on the front, too. Those stickers, the steel reinforced neck stickers, gorgeous. Look at that Zimgar sticker. It's work of art. Artists and special made. Yeah, I really love that. I love it, love it, love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Look at this. Intact. Kept in the box. So, you know what I mean? It's got everything. Nothing's really broken on it. You should be an easy little guy. Well, let's take the remaining strings. Let's give it a whole new set. Fuck it, man. I'm feeling very benevolent, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll see you in the laboratory. Right? A little bit of strumming action there. You know what I mean? A lot of strumming going on. Hey, man. What can I say, man? I like the effects of PCP. I'll see you in the lab, man. No, not that lab, bro. What are you talking about in front of the people for? Uh, I welcome you back. You to the laboratory. Have a seat. I like that improvisation, boy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I made a couple little discoveries here. Discovery about myself. So nice. Now, I really wanted to see this beautiful, beautiful label. So I was like, let me take this. And it had this, you know what I mean? 112% Predator. You know what I mean? Could not get it off. <laughs> not was like, you know what I mean? Like a super nut. I was like, it took me like a half hour to get it off. And I finally got it off. So I started jamming out the guitar without even like tuning it. And I like a weird tuning, but it's excellent. Like, the axe was cool. I looked at it. And these strings look like the original strings. You know what I mean? They look to be in pretty good condition, too. <laughs> I don't want to get rid of these strings. This thing sounds awesome. The action is nice. And I opened my box this morning to put some strings on another guitar. A string box. And I saw two strings that would totally fit this. They're brand new. Just orphans in the box. Orphans just standing there, so I think I'm gonna keep them. The other revelation I made look at this real carefully. This is actually like um, gloss paint, like a real thick layer of gloss paint. I was like, is that purloid? You know, mother toilet seat. It's like a real thick glob of gloss paint, man. It fooled me, man. Had me fooled. I didn't really look at, look at it, look at it until I was like, jamming on it. But it's an excellent little instrument. It's an excellent, excellent, excellent. So what we're going to do here, we're going to wipe it down with some furniture polish, really, in a rag. We're going to loosen these strings completely. And we're just going to, I mean, the frets are all good. We're going to try to get rid of this mess. And just scrub it off a little bit somehow. And then, then we'll treat the fretboard. But let's try to get those strings loosened first off. And then it's cleaned off secondly. Try to keep the bridge right where it is. These floating bridges, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's hard to find if the manufacturer hasn't put a little line here. Doesn't look like they had the courtesy with it down here. I don't know, man. Don't want to risk finding a sweet spot, man. This is a really good sounding little guitar. I will see you in a short moment. A period from now, which will be announced right now. One, two, three. All right. We cleaned off the matte finish. Now it's kind of hard to clean the matte finish. I'm saying it kind of still looks greasy in places sometimes, but we did the best we could. Made some discoveries. First discovery: this guy was not loose. I got a dowel with a piece of like masking tape. Pull him out of there, man. Do a little biopsy, man. A nice old bass pick from the 70s. Look at that. Cool, man. The bass from the 70s, man. Ooh. I noticed also that there's like a manufacturing defect in there. Look at that wall. It's like glued right in the middle there. You see that? That's glued, too. 
I checked it out. It's like glued tight. I thought it like came loose. It's just glued right in the middle. <laughs> the quality control is a little off. Look at that where the brace is. With the little notches for the brace. It seems structurally sound. <laughs> anyway, second discovery we made. See this? This is actually a factory defect. They painted the wrong place. And they wiped it off. Look, you can see where the little circle is. Oh, fuck. I painted the wrong place. Now, this doesn't, to me, I mean, look like fake rosewood, but I don't think it's real. I think it's painted just like the same way this is. So getting this off might be pain in the ass. They should have done a better job at the factory and it was still wet. You know what I'm saying? And not 50 years later. <laughs> so we're going to try to very gingerly do some steel wool, some earl to just get this, you know what I mean? Minimumized. Minimumized. You know what I'm saying, man? Yeah, man. Did you say base? I just, I just shut up, man. Another thing is, when you see things that are like crack looking like this, you know what I'm saying? Especially that one, it's like shatter. You want to turn them with the with like one of these. Sometimes if it's real bad, you're gonna to want to put like a little piece of like wax paper or tissue around it. You don't want these to break. You, know what I'm you don't want them to break, nor you. I'm gonna get you to break. Then we clean all the cobwebs out too, right? Just a couple of things, man. So I'll see you after we take a little piece of steel wool and a little bit of mineral oil and just try to remove this. Remove it a little bit there, now you hang it. See you in a minute. Mm -hmm. See, you barely see it, right? It's a little greasy looking. Just took a little piece of, you know what I'm saying? Steel wool, mineral earl. We got it down to the minimum. We took a, a you know, furniture marker and we just, whatever white we saw left. Now we're just gonna, you know, I went over the frets too with the, you know, little piece of steel wool. You know what I'm saying? Just to clean them up a little bit. Now we're just take the mineral oil, little paper towel sitting in the garbage. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Reuse, refuse. We're just gonna get this guy all greased up. You know what I mean? Even it out a little bit. I'll see you then. All right. So it's all greased up now. You can't even see where the, the errant fret really was. Well, you can if you look at. Mineral oil, I don't think this is real rosewood. I thought it started, it started getting a little bit like, you know what I mean, almost through the finish a couple times, and I looked at it, maybe it wasn't. I don't know what the hell it is, really, honestly. Looks good, though. <laughs> and saying so, for such a, a shoddy guitar, this is actually glued down. Isn't that funny? It's glued in the right place, now, eh? So, we'll let that set for a little while. So it looks like it's eating it up a little bit. Then we're going to rub it off. Just rub it off, Stephen. You know what I'm talking about. When you get to be that age. <laughs> right? Alright, so I'll see you when it's all sort of wiped off, man. And then we'll talk about just one more thing. And I'll let you go. You know what I'm saying? Have some free time. This beautiful day. <laughs> Look at that. All wiped off. Just looking great, man. Just looking great. So, got the strings out of the pile, man. Up the pile. These strings are barely used, you know what I mean? This one looks newer than that one, but I mean, they're both in great condition. <laughs> That's why I always tuck away strings that I have that are in pretty good condition. And they're kind of like, you know what I mean, vintage. Vintage old strings, man. So, let's tighten it up. Be real careful. Let's use one of these. Because these, you know what I mean, we don't want these to crumble out, man. You know what I'm saying? And I will see you when we got this all tuned up at a place I like to call the Glam Shots. In one, two, and three. And there it is. It's actually not that cool without that strange tuning it had. It had like a weird tuning. I don't know if it was like just coincidental because it was missing like two strings. But it was like, it was like, sounded like a medieval instrument. It was excellent. <laughs> now it's just sort of like an old guitar. And I think this gauge of strings that I put on here is a little bit too thick. Probably should have just did what I was going to, you know what I mean? What I was going to do, man, is just put like a new set of like really light gauge strings on it, but whatever. I'll just loosen them when I put it back in the box, man. 
I had a good friend, man, my man Theory. He found this old guitar in his uh, closet in the attic. It belonged to his uncle. It was like a real piece of garbage, you know what I mean? And it had like four strings on it all on a weird tuning, you know? And he like refused to put like a set of good strings. I was like, hey, man, I put a good set of strings on that, man. I tuned it up. Oh, don't touch it, man. I said, well, let me at least tune it up. I was like, don't you dare, you know what I mean? My uncle tuned that up. You know what I'm saying? Right before he went to jail, he tuned it up. We never heard from him again, you know what I'm saying? I was never, you know what I mean? I, to this day, I believe that guitar is still like in whatever tuning, you know what I mean? Out of tune from whatever it was tuned to. 39S. This is, this is S is for short. He's a shorty, you know what I'm saying? Not really particular, you know what I'm saying? Just mental note, you want to detune this instrument. You know what I'm saying? Detune it. And you put it back in that box. Or it's long goodbye. You know what I'm long goodbye. Like Ronald Reagan. Alright, well, that's all I can say right now. Let's listen to it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Because the sound is like a million pictures, right? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Zimgar 39S. Sounds like a key day coin, you know what I'm saying? Mercury Dang 39S. MS60 condition. Serious bit is on. Hey man, I did this guitar a serious disservice by not putting new strings on it because these strings are horrible. And they're at the end of their lifespan. So this thing just screams 70s, mid 70s, 73, 74, I'm saying in my mind. Maybe 75, 76, maybe even 77 or 78. Definitely not around 79. 79, they're a little bit more like. Head of all times. Head of all times was 79. So I remember, I told you guys a whole bunch of times about when I was about 13, I got like a, a trove of like beautiful vinyl out of my neighbor's trash, you know. And I'm talking like 70, 100 discs, you know, a lot of late 70s, early 70s, late 60s, early 80s. Just everything cool, you know what I mean? A lot of new wave, a lot of pop, a lot of just funky stuff, man. Just cool stuff. Traffic. I remember there's this one disc in there. It's called Frampton Comes Alive. It was a double disc, a live album. Peter Frampton. Now, at the time, I knew who Peter Frampton was, right? Because I recently got at this record store, an unopened mint condition copy of Sgt. Pepper's soundtrack starring the Bee Gees and Peter Frampton, the remake of all kinds of Beatles songs, primarily Sgt. Pepper era stuff, by like a super group of the Bee Gees and Peter Frampton together. It wasn't that good, man. It was pretty bad. I, I pretty much had like George Burns was on there. Steve Martin. There was a cool version of Get Back by Billy Preston. That was pretty cool. Noteworthy. He's playing his little piano lick. He's beating a little Mexican boy in the back room. Come on, Pedro. Get on back. Only serious Beatles fans will know what I'm talking about there. We really go round in circles. <laughs> anyway, Frampton comes alive. I saw Peter Frampton eventually, coincidentally, with Rango Starr and All Star Band. Kind of like, you know what I mean? Very dated, that little vocator thing, whatever he uses. Yeah, I don't really like that thing, man. For some reason, it just kind of annoys me. If you're like a big fan of that little blow tube thing that he makes, it's like, a, it's like to me, like a fucking glorified kazoo. What can I say? It's the way I feel about it. Sue me if I'm wrong. <laughs> anyway, I remember... Uh, I started listening to it and I was thinking like, 
these are all pretty good songs, you know what I mean? This is like a double or triple album or something like that. Frampton Comes Alive. So, but I never heard any of the originals of these ever. And I never hear them on the radio now, like the studio version. And I was thinking to myself, is there studio versions of some of these great Frampton Comes Alive tracks? Mm, I never heard them. You know what I mean? I'm not a big fan of Peter Frampton. But I can see where, you know what I mean? Shadows your hands my man wash your hands national treasure for that one disc man one disc you know what i mean a phony live album right i bet you have the studio shit too man right. oh, see you next time